Well, welcome back, my YouTube friends. Um, let me tell you, last night me and Sweet Pea had one hot night in this, this very bed right here. And I know what you're thinking. It must be Kevin's birthday. Nope, that's not really the reason why. The reason why we had such a hot night is because our Mach 2 or Coleman Mach air conditioner quit working. So today's little challenge is to find out why it quit working and fix it. So, like I do every evening, we always run the back air to keep everything nice and cool for some good sleeping. And the first thing I always do, and I've always done this, I don't just come in here and flip on cool. I always turn the fan on first because I want to make sure the motor spins up, I get the amp load away, and then I engage the compressor. And if you just flip cool only, and then you're, you're starting the fan motor and the compressor all at the same time, really loading up on the amps. And this has served me well for the over the years, and it, I may have saved myself some money. Hopefully, it just depends on what, what failed. But I'll let you listen to it, see if you can hear it. Oh, it tried to start that time. Let's try it again. Okay, wow. Now, yesterday it just sat there and hummed. It wouldn't even start. That's the way it goes, isn't it? Every time you go to do a video, then it, it's like take a car to get it fixed, and then it works. All right. But last night, even this morning, I, when I flipped that on, all it would do is hum. It wouldn't even start spinning up. So that's a good sign. So I'm assuming this my capacitor is about to fail. So let me show you how I normally do this uh, on my front air. Okay, so here's the front air. So we normally, whenever I kick it on, I'll, and you can watch the amps right here. So we're at 3.7 amps. I'm going to kick the fan on first. Get it up and running. So I know we're good. Then I'll kick over the air. And I'll wait for it, listen for it. There it went. You see the jumping amps. So I know both the compressor and the fan is working during their job. In fact, last year it kind of had this, this a similar failure. It was a little bit different. On this this front air, I turned on the, the fan, and it's like the first time of the season. It's, that's always the trickiest part. The first time you kick one on, you want to make sure everything's working. So I turned the fan on. Then when I went to cool. I noticed I didn't hear it kick on, and I, I didn't see any amp change. And then about that very same time, Sherry said she smelled something, and it blew a, blew a capacitor. So, um, and I went ahead and bought all new capacitors. Of course, I never got around to putting them all in. So, I'm going to go up on the roof and uh, check this thing out and uh, see what we can find. All right, you can see here up on the roof, to get the cover off is pretty easy. You just take off the force Phillips screws. But there's a little trick to it. On the back side, you'll see... You see those foam pieces in there and if they're bad you need to replace those so that helps direct the, the airflow properly I, in fact i made those because the other ones have got rotted on me but you'll notice these little clips you got a clip right down here and two up front so you want to take that cover and kind of shift it forward so you can get off these get off these clips and then, then it lifts right off for you so my next step i'm going to take these screws out here I think it's about three or four screws. Take this plate off, and that's where my capacitor should be. And uh, we'll get to do some testing and see what we find out. All right, we see we got three capacitors in there. So we got our our hard start capacitor, or start capacitor. Then you they got the little hard start device on top. I'll make sure I get the camera there. The little black device there. Got your start capacitor. You got a run capacitor on the compressor, and I. I think just a start capacitor for the motor, I believe. Not really sure I'll get them out. Maybe I can tell for sure. But we've got three in there to check. So give me a Phillips screwdriver and get them loose and, of course, get the power turned off. Okay, now it's acting up again. You listen to it here at home. Nothing, just humming. That's no good. Can't have just hum. We want that thing to run. Okay, so let's go fix this thing. And like I mentioned before, find your air conditioner, make sure your air conditioner breakers, make sure they're turned off, but then verify uh, once you get on top that there is no power. Okay, back on the roof, um, and I've, I've got my new capacitors. I think I mentioned last year I went ahead and ordered all new capacitors because I knew this day was coming. And I had plans on going ahead and replacing all this stuff back in the winter, but I didn't get around to it, so now I'm doing it now. So what we got? Tools. You don't need much. One tool I really like for testing capacitors and HVAC stuff, comp compressors and voltage, 
This tool is really great. The what's that model? An SC440. Uh, it's got your, 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 your snap gauge here for measuring the amp load on compressors. And you can teach yourself this stuff. It's, there's videos all over the place. You, you know, like, I, there's no telling how many of these, wind, these RV air conditioners get replaced every year that don't need replacing. They just need fixing. Uh, you know, because when they leave the factory, the, the Freon, that part is all sealed up. Now, if you got a Freon leak, it's pretty much over unless you find and fix the leak. But most of the times when these things fail, it's due to the capacitor. But I don't know, I imagine Camping World, they maybe don't go to the trouble of, of troubleshooting and put, they'll just say, hey, you need a new air conditioner. This is too old, it can't be fixed, that'll be $1,300, please. But, you know, you can go in here and pick up a capacitor for 20, 30 bucks and, and fix it yourself. Uh, it, it, if you have the tools and just a little bit of knowledge, like I said, you can teach yourself this stuff pretty easy. Uh, that's, that's kind of what I've done, done over, over the years. Like for example, so here this is the the blower motor capacitor. So and I and I figured it out by looking up the parts schematic on this thing and going by the part number, so I know what is what. Of course, also you normally your two brown wires is always the fan fan motor in, uh, capacitor, anyways. So let's hook this up and see what kind of reading we get. We get. Well, first of all, before I hook this up, you want to discharge the capacitor. You know, take a pair of needle nose pliers, it's got rubber handles on them, cross it, make sure it's discharged, you're good to go. Look up our meter, and if you look at the capacitor, we can see it here, it says it should be reading 7.5 microfarads. So let's see what we get, because this is the old one, and then we'll compare it to the new one. All oh, this one-handed nonsense drives me crazy. Hang on a second, let me switch hands. There we go. So we're coming in at 6.89, should be uh, 7.5. So we got a bad capacitor. So let's confirm that, let's test this brand new one, see what it comes in at. Because again, the brand new one says 7.5. Let's test it. Hang on, let me get two hands on this thing. Okay, here we are. Got it hooked up. We're coming in at 7.53. So, and it's always a good idea to test your new capacitors. You know, because just because you buy something new doesn't mean it's good. But we know this is good. It's within range, within spec. So, I'm going to replace this. And then I'm also going to replace the, the other two because I've got them here. And my, my box of goodies. We'll, we'll get that get that done. Well, like I said earlier, you know, make sure you got the power off. But if you have a proximity tester, these things are great because you can go up here and double check. If it lights up and beeps, you know you still have power. These little tools are awesome. They're 20 bucks, 30 bucks maybe. But a uh, super handy tool to have just, just to make sure everything is safe and you don't get a shock. So I've got that one changed. Then I got my other compressor here. Just take you a pair of needle nose or sometimes a screwdriver, just a flat blade, blade screwdriver. and carefully push the terminals off and just change one at a time and on these capacitors it doesn't matter it's not like it's a positive or negative it doesn't matter which way you hook them up you just want to make sure you get your reds on the reds yellows just match them up the same way and before you change them it's always a good idea to make sure the rut they're the same size this is 30 microfarad uf and this is also 30 so i know we've got the right capacitor going into the right spot and same way just like a, a replace my bad one that I know was bad because it wouldn't start I'm comparing the, the this is the run capacitor for the compressor so it's supposed to be 30 microfarads it's coming in at 25 so it's already low now let's also let's hook up the new capacitor and, and see what it reads all right now you see I've got the new capacitor hooked up like it's supposed to be 30 microfarads plus or minus six percent we're coming in at 29.73 so we're, we're within spec so we know uh, our new one is also uh, reading the correct microfarads that we need. So I'll plug that up and then I'll go to the start capacitor. All right, now it's time to replace my uh, start relay on the compressor. And this has a, what's this thing called, a PTC, hang on, I gotta remember it's a little acronym it's got for it, I got a manual. PTCR, there it is, PTCR, what is that thing called, potential? maybe a coefficient relay or something like that. I may not be saying it exactly right, but I know what it does. It, just for a brief moment, when you go to start your compressor, this 
start capacitor is in the circuit, but the moment it starts, it disengages. I had to pause there, I had a phone call coming in. But the, um, the moment the compressor begins to run, this little device takes this capacitor out of the circuit. And I noticed the new one's made a little bit different. So, uh, but again, I went with the OEM capacitors. Same way, I'm gonna unplug this, measure it, and compare it to the brand new one. See how much difference. Remember what, see this is what happened to my one last year on that air unit up front. So uh, while I'm here, I'm going ahead and change the other capacitors in it and get all that done at one time. So let's undo these wires and uh, do some testing. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing with my old start capacitor. It's supposed to be 88 to 108 microfarads, and it's coming in at 90, 96. So it's fairly within spec. So uh, I'm going to double check, test the new one too. Checking the new one, it's coming in at 91. And it's its spec is anywhere between 88 to 108 microfarads. So we'll wire that up and we'll be ready for a test run. So as you can see, all my capacitors are back in place, all hooked up. And if you get, the, if you get these new capacitors, it even comes with wiring diagrams, everything you need. So it's a pretty, pretty easy thing to do yourself. Good, good preemptive pre strike to keep these air conditioners running. So I'll put this, this cover back on and I'll have Sweet Pea powered up for me from below and we'll see what happens. Alright, well I came down here myself because I needed some more supplies anyway to pick, take back up on the roof. So here we go for our test. Turn on the fan first like I always do. There she goes. Sounds good. Now let's listen for the compressor to come on. There it goes. Heard it kick. Alright, we got a working air conditioner. But I found another problem. So let me go up there and show you what I found. Alright, back on the roof. Well, we got the capacitor problem. All that is solved. But while I was starting to button things up, I noticed another problem. I seen this zip tie laying down here in the bottom. I said, well, that went somewhere. So I got to looking. It used to tie these wires up. And after that broke, you can see what's happened. The, the wire, this is called a rub out. You'll get these will happen sometimes. You see where this, I get my camera in the right spot. You see where that's been rubbing? Over time, that'll eventually rub through and you'll get a short and that'll cause you problems. You know, you pressure something won't engage or just pop the brake, trip a breaker. So that's why it's good to be visual when you're looking at this stuff. There's always something that can go wrong at any minute, it seems like. So I'm going to put me some zip ties on that, clean these wires up so nothing is rubbing anywhere. And you can also see how I've got me, in my RV, I always carry this foil tape. Uh, it's really good stuff. So when I get into something like this, I can seal this up good. So you see how I've got all the, all the joints are sealed to make these air conditioners as efficient as possible. Because if you don't seal these gaps, it will, it'll suck out hot air into the box. And you don't want that. And I guess while I'm up here, I'm going to, I'm going to take a hose and clean out this radiator it's a little, little dusty all right so let's do some zip tying and try to finish this up all right you see I got my everything all sealed up good nice good tape and another, another tip for you on these holes be sure to put your little dab of grease in there because they're bad about getting rusted up so bad when you try to take the screws out these little uh like they're kind of I don't know kind of spot welded in they'll spin inside the housing and cause you grief. So they can be real, real burgers to get out sometimes because of all the rain and water that gets into them. So dabber grease goes a long way to keeping those in good shape when you need to get them off later on. Oh, it just dawned on me. You may be wondering what these are. Well, these are, uh, what's this thing called? Wire chases where you can put wire in and put it up alongside your wall to, to hide wires going up to your TV and stuff. Well, I use these to catch the water. Uh, out of the evaporator the water drips normally there's a little weep hole it drips out and just runs all over the roof taking the dirt with it down over the side of the RV so I thought how nice it would be just to catch that water and run it out and let it drip off the side of the RV so that's what these do and I made a separate video on how to make them it's a pretty simple little project and helps keep the side of your RV a little bit cleaner so that's what that does all right you see my zip tie here I got that all up and now my wires not touching I'm not going to have no sh shorts in the future. Everything's clear over here. Everything looks good. Also, remember I talked about those little foam pieces right there? They are important. Let me show you why. Those foam pieces push up against this metal plate here. What that does, 
because we, you know, this is what we call somewhat the cool side. This is the hot side. This is pulling in relatively cool air, and then you have extremely hot air on on this end, and then the hot air is being pushed out these grills to the side. Now, if you don't have that piece of foam in place, what's what's happening? All that hot air that would normally come out to the side, it comes out and loops back around and goes right back in into the the uh, that is called the the condenser. That's right, evaporators on this side, condensers on this side. So you want those foam pieces to, for your efficiency. If, if they're missing or not in place, you need to get some or do like I did. I made some out of some foam. And so that way we can keep these things running as efficient as possible. And another thing I figure I'm going to do, I'm going to go through, I'll test all my old ones. Whichever ones test out the best or, or closest to being good, I'll keep with me on uh, in the RV as we travel, just in case I'm in the middle of Death Valley and I, I crap out another capacitor years down the road. Uh, I'll have one with me that uh, may get me out of a bind. But I think that's all I got to share with you on this little project. Hope you learned something. So remember, if your air conditioner craps out on you, be ready. Have your capacitors or go ahead and change them out. Get a service manual for your, your particular model and uh, watch a few YouTube videos so you'll be ready to go. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a blessed day. See you bye.